Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hello, and thank you for being with me today. We're going to talk about your audio first and audio only options. The available options in this arena have been a changing landscape over the last few years, where there was no option to do that for any indie authors or small publishers, and possibly some of the big publishers were able to manage deals with Audible, for example, to pull that off. But as a general rule, for those of us in the indie world, it was not an option. Then along came Authors Republic, and it became an option for a while. And that was really exciting. We had some titles that went out as audio only, and that was great. But then that changed. Audiobook retailers went back to requiring an author to have their book in either print or ebook prior to being able to produce or publish an audiobook of that book. Now, the truth is that most books typically, and most authors typically, are thinking in this way that they want to first produce their ebook or their print book, and then audio comes later. But there are books, or let me say there are works, that are either not going to be best in a print format or an ebook format, or the rights holder would like the opportunity to lead with the audio. And so we're going to talk about some of the details of uh, what kinds of materials may be best in the audio first or audio only world and also what you'll need to know in order to be able to make that decision if that feels like a fit for you. Let's start off with what are the kinds of materials that really make sense for audio first or audio only, especially the audio only. We've produced audiobook versions of screenplays And that's a style of writing that most people, the general audience, is not especially interested in reading. Yes, there are people who do enjoy that, especially those who are particularly interested in producing film. But the average person typically is not going to be interested in reading a screenplay. But they make wonderful audiobooks. And for screenwriters, it can be an opportunity to have a version of your material that is maybe a little more accessible or easier to pitch because you've got something that sounds like what the film could become. And so when you're pitching a film, typically you're in person and you're talking to somebody. But if you can get your audiobook version out there in the world, start to build your audience, and then use that audiobook or clips of it to start to generate interest with film directors, producers, actors, those who have influence in that world. Uh, That can be a great way to go. The same can be true for theater scripts. For both of these formats, there are obviously normally would be very visual components to the project overall. And so there is some consideration in terms of how to produce that as an audio only piece. But it's certainly doable. We've done it in both cases, scripts, theater scripts, as well as screenplays, and they work really well. It's always coming back to how can we convey the not just the feeling and the and the content, but also convey what's happening visually in a way that will provide the listener with what they need to fully enjoy the story. There are also some wonderful projects that I think about full cast projects where you have uh, multiple voices creating a real soundscape 
also with music and sound effects. And, and these are a, like a full production, are a wonderful kind of audio first opportunity. And I say that because the audiobook in this case, while it could be read as a print book or an ebook, the audiobook is offering something extra special. And so that feel, that's why I say that it feels like this great opportunity to treat it as an audio first, if not an audio only. Another genre of material that I think works very well as either audio first or audio only are children's books. With children's books, many times you already have them illustrated, and the illustrations tend to be quite expensive, that whole illustration process, because it's very time intensive. And getting a quality artist who can deliver what you need for that, it makes sense that it's expensive. What's interesting is that when we talk about children's books in the audiobook world, they tend to be very short. And so even though they can be very rich from a soundscape perspective with music and sound effects, the overall project tends to be very short. It might be less than five minutes. And so the cost is considerably lower than what it is to have a children's book, like a children's picture book, illustrated fully. So this is a way to create children's audiobooks in a very rich way without having the expense of the illustrations. You'd still have to have your cover image, but not an image for every page. And just a couple other types of material that I think have great potential in this realm. One is a book that may have something like Meditations, where the audio itself is going to be very distinctly different from the print experience. You can read a meditation, and you're never going to be able to meditate to that meditation while you're reading it, right? So having it as an audio really creates a very different kind of experience. And if your book has meditations in it, you might want to consider going audio first. And one last, and this might really surprise you, but here's a thought for you to consider. If you have a lot of images in your book, you know that the print layout cost or even the cost of an ebook because of the layout and then also the download fees for the how image heavy it is, those are significant. If you were to go audio only with an image heavy book, then you are creating an opportunity to invite people to your website and you put up the images there. And then your audiobook really is a way to sort of connect people with your website. And also, you're still delivering that material without having a lot of that upfront cost of the layout of a book with many images. That's obviously not going to work for everyone, but it's something to consider. And if it feels like that might work for you, then, you know, we could, we could talk about that. One of the genres that I think that could fit well into is actually memoir, because many memoirs will have photographs of, you know, family and historical images that would work really well on the website, and you don't really need them in the telling of the story so much. So something to consider there in terms of, you know, what kinds of material you might consider. Now, as I mentioned earlier, going audio first or audio only was really taken off the plate of opportunities, uh, off the menu of options available for us until now. With the launch of Amplify Audiobooks, which is an author direct sale platform that we at Pro Audio Voices have created, we now have the opportunity again to offer audio first, or audio only. Let's just take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about both what you need in order to do audio first or audio only, and then we're also going to talk about 
how you can leverage that platform and your audiobook for success. We'll be right back. Frustrated by the royalty rates for your audiobook, annoyed that when the digital distributors say 70%, they actually mean 70% of 50% or 80% of 70%, neither of which is an actual 70%. Wishing there was a way to cut out, or at least shrink, the middleman. Yet, you want your audiobook listeners to have a smooth and positive experience, and a direct download sale from your website won't deliver that. Pro Audio Voices hears you. Out of our commitment to our author clients, we've created Amplify, a program that provides an actual 65% royalties of the price you set that gives you access to your customers' names and emails so you can reconnect with them and keeps you in the driver's seat. Check it out at ProAudioVoices.com in the marketing menu. Okay, so unless you are an author that somehow has managed to figure out a way to have somebody else manage all of your marketing, then you'll know, you'll be aware that really you are always going to be in charge of directing traffic. Directing traffic to your books, to your audiobooks, to your website, you are in charge of that. And while that may feel like a heavy burden for those of you that don't really feel very good about or are not really attracted to the marketing process, it is empowering because you have the power to control what is going on in your marketing. If it's always up to somebody else, then they get to have all the say, they get to make all the decisions. So I want to encourage you to look on the bright side as and look at it as an opportunity. First of all, before we really dive into marketing, let's talk about the details of what you'll need in order to be able to publish your audiobook even though you don't have another text version available. So you're still going to need a square cover image and ideally two audio specifications. We do have, a, there is a minimum, I think, of 1,200 pixels square. 2,400 pixels square is optimal. And 2,400 square is what you will need if you go ahead and publish it through any other digital distributor, through any other retailers. And you will also need all your metadata, which is a good thing. All of your metadata, and what we're talking about here are things like your book description, your genres, your price, all those kinds of details. We need that as well. And then the finished audio files. And we still need the audio files to have your opening credits and your closing credits in their own distinct tracks and a retail sample as well. And that's basically all you need in order to publish on the Amplify audiobooks platform. Now, I want to talk a little bit about royalties because when I want to give you an idea of one reason why it could be really great for you to at least go audio first, if not audio only. Let's just use as an example a $15 sales price for your book. Now, it could be anything, but I'm just going to put it out there at $15 for this example. If you were to sell your book on ACX, first of all, you wouldn't have the opportunity to actually control that price. But I'm using that price because many times they will sell an audiobook for the cost of a credit. A credit is $14.95 per month, typically, and that would be sort of the formula that they use. Now, others have done uh, the calculations on what the ACX royalties actually work out to be. They claim, or they state, 40% if you're exclusive, 25% if you're non-exclusive, but they're not clear about what that formula is. And the calculations that have been done indicate that it's closer to about 10% is what you get. So if you sell that audiobook, that $15 audiobook on ACX, then you may get about $1.50. 
on Amplify, you'll get 65% of the gross, which means that would be $9.75. So let's say if you sold for 10 books that you sell on Amplify, you'd have to sell 65 on Audible to make the same amount of profit. So I'm just trying to give you an example of how that royalty works out. And again, one of the reasons why it's such a powerful platform. The other reason it's such a powerful platform is because of all the control you get. You have a dashboard where you can set your own price, change your metadata if you choose, and create promotions and discount coupons. You will also have direct access to your customer's name and email so you can follow up with them. So here are some things then that I recommend that you consider taking advantage of and ways to utilize the Amplify platform that will help you achieve your goals. First of all, use promotions and time-sensitive discount codes to create urgency. We all know how effective sales are. We put something, when we see something is on sale or discounted for a certain amount of time, we Even when we know what's going on, even when we see the technique, we still feel that urgency to get it while I can at the price that's been lowered. We all love a deal. So create some deals and let your audience know about them. Another thing you can do is when your customers do buy, keep offering value to them. So follow up with them and keep offering value. I say that because if you keep following up and saying, and buy this and do this for me and do that for me, uh, people will unsubscribe. But if you keep offering value, letting them know about what else is available to them, so it's a different way of looking at it and a different approach and a very different mindset. Keep in mind, how can you help your customers achieve their goals, and that will help you achieve yours. So normally, since authors don't get access to customer information, listeners don't usually hear from the authors that they have purchased from. So you have an opportunity here. Ask nicely for a review or feedback to post on Amplify or to post on your website or to use in social media. You can export your customer list to your email system, whatever system you use. If you're not yet using email marketing, which is still known to be the most effective form of marketing, then this would be a good time to start. Use your first customer list as your beginning email list. It's okay if there are only five people on it initially. You can still reach out and develop your community by communicating with those folks who are on your list. You can also reach out to other Amplify authors who are writing in your genre or have a similar target audience. Set up some cross promotions. You help them, they help you. Part of what we're doing with Amplify is building community, helping each other. So I'm going to call that a wrap for today. I just wanted to stimulate the juices around your thinking of audio first and audio only and letting you know that there is now this opportunity to be a part of that. If you would like to learn more, you can go to our website at proaudiovoices.com. You could also go to proaudiovoices.app and you will find it directly there. If you have questions, please reach out to us. Uh, You can email us about Amplify at amplify at proaudiovoices.com. And we're looking forward to building that platform in some very exciting ways. So I hope you'll join us and be a part of this very exciting journey with us. Again, thanks for being with me and have a fantastic day. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. 
Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.